going to walk you through step-by-step -step how to replace or upgrade your Chevy Cruze fuel pump. Let's do it. So last video our fuel pump came in. Let's go ahead and toss that bad boy in on a day where I've got some time because tomorrow it's gonna rain. It's raining sideways! Ooh, it's nice and dark. It's gonna be fun. We're going to jack up the rear of the car. We'll get the rear end up. We'll start disconnecting all the hoses. I've got my wheels chalked in the front. We got another chalk over here. I'm gonna get after it and then point out little things here and there. To, if you wanna do this yourself, replace your own fuel pump, even if it's just a stock one, this will definitely help. I've got my battery disconnected. Everything's jacked up. You know, jack stands. And I have my jack stands in here. I'm not completely under the car yet. However, there are these three connections here. One of these looks like an electrical connector. Just gonna squeeze the top of this thing. But it looks like disconnecting this right here that kind of holds all these lines. It'll give you a little more wiggle room. So you can kind of Pull this stuff down just a little bit. And I'm just gonna squeeze the top of this and pull it up. I am gonna need two hands to do that. This one looks like I've got a little red clip on it. Just squeeze those in, pull it back. Let's see if we can't do this one-handed. Okay, I'm gonna need to set the camera down to do that. Let's see what else we got. We got a little blue clip here. And I'm just gonna pry. These two ends out and pull it up. You can take that completely off. All right, so I got this disconnected. I did put some gloves on because I knew there was going to be some fuel spillage. God damn it. Once you get that little blue clip off over there, just press this in. This is part of your, your fuel line. And this is what sends the pressure to it. This is probably some EGR type stuff and this is more than likely your fuel pressure sensor. So let's see if we can't pull this guy, the old EGR thingamabobber. So I pulled this little red tab out. I'm just gonna pry it with my thumb. There we go. So we got that disconnected. Um, and then this has a little tab up here. Let me try and do this one-handed. Let's see if I can't set you all down. I got the fuel pressure sensor disconnected. If, it, if I had to do this again, I'd start this side, move this way, because as you fuss with this, fuel definitely will pour out. So start at this end. The next thing I need to do, here's the, the filler neck. I'm gonna disconnect it here because there's this other disconnection point, but it's up at the top. So let's go the easy route, shall we? And I just hit it with the little PB blaster just to make things a little easier to take apart. Let's see if we can't pry this thing off. Come on, you little bitch. Now you want to come out? So I got this pretty loose, but I think I'm just going to finish disconnecting this once I drop the tank because the suspension is in the way and it's just hard for me to get to it. But there is one more piece that we need to disconnect here. And we'll just kind of push this out of the way. So it's right next to the filler neck. There we go. It's part of the EGR, I imagine. A little bit of crap coming out there. All right. So now, towards the top, or more towards the, the front side of the car, we've got couple strap bolts here. I believe they are 13 millimeter. I'll report back here in a second let you know what they are. We'll just release these two straps down and I'm going to take my jack stand put it underneath it to support it. We'll lower it down. There are a few connections on the top of the fuel pump that we'll need to disconnect and we'll get to those as we lower everything. 
think it's a 13. Yeah, there we go. All right. All right, so at this point, the gas tank is starting to fall a little bit. It's putting some tension on this strap, so I'm just going to jack this up to support the gas tank real quick. Now, we've got the jack stand supporting it. You can easily do this by finger. By finger. <laughs> by hand. And now, we can actually remove these straps because they just kind of unlatch from the back over here. I'm gonna go check over there, make sure it's not hung on anything. All right, we've got our other fuel strap undone. So now we're gonna lower the jack stand with the fuel pump and we'll disconnect that filler hose. Toss me a little bit of a rag in here, clean rag, just to make sure nothing comes out. And it does look like there's a little bit of a, a valve here to keep fuel from spilling out, but I don't wanna get dirt in there as well. So let's see if we can't finish letting this thing down. Looks like we're all disconnected. There we go. And okay. Oh shit. All right. All right. <laughs> There's a hose we're pulling on. Fuck. That's that one right there. So I'm gonna have to set the camera down. Wiring that goes to this charcoal canister here, and it's got a little connector right here, which I need to disconnect. Got this little red clip here. And this whole charcoal canister looks like it just hangs on by this little V bracket. So if you just wanted to remove that, you can. I'm just gonna leave it on, pry that little clip out. There we go. Get off there. God damn. There we go. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna start disconnecting things here from the fuel pump. Push this little tab down. Pull that guy out. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's hard to tell. Hard to tell when it's dark. All right, let's see if we can figure this one out. Now we have it on the ground. Oh my God, that was so much easier. Now we can move this wiring harness out of the way and uh, just slide this guy out. Okay, we got the fuel tank out. I've dragged it into the shop. I think what I'm gonna do next is just kind of clean it up a little bit with some compressed air. Really don't have any way to, to bathe this thing, but uh, at least we'll do some compressed air and just kind of clean around the area where we're going to install the fuel pump. everything all nice and cleaned up I kind of feel like I might have got a little carried away but I figured why not go ahead and clean as much as I can while it's out next thing I need to do is get this ring off that holds the fuel pump in there there are special tools that lock in there and you can twist but we're just going to use the old-school method of a hammer and a flathead screwdriver so let's go ahead and get after that I almost forgot we need to remove this in which squeeze this guy in well, let's push it forward first I'm pushing it forward with my knuckle take that guy off move it out of the way you want to be careful with these plastic hoses because they can break that out of hold it and then this guy here has got a little push tab if i can reach the damn thing there we go push it in so i'm pushing this in as well as that Come on, you bastard. Come on. There we go. And then we'll move this guy out of the way as well. we'll just disconnect it from over here. Spread these like some butt cheeks. Get that out of the way. 
Now all that's left is this ring, so let's get after it. Not much to it. There we go. Set this guy aside and pull out our fuel pump. It simply looks like we might be hung up on the float. Yeah. There we go. Let's let some of that fuel. Oh shit. That's probably not good. Let's not go getting dirt all in there. It's one of the reasons we cleaned up. All right, I'm just gonna set this aside. And you can see this fuel tank is pretty clean. Not a whole lot in there. I'm not sure what those things are. I'm sure it has to do something with something or another. <laughs> Let's see if we can just take a peek inside of this thing. Let's see if I don't drop my phone. But she's pretty clean. Now let's install the upgraded fuel pump. Be sure to check out my previous video here. I sent my fuel pump or a fuel pump over Deech Works. They sent back this fuel pump, I unboxed it, just kind of talked about everything. But essentially it has a DW300C, which will flow more fuel because we do have a turbocharged project here. But let's go ahead and toss the new fuel pump in or the upgraded one. Let's see what we got here. All right, so I'm just gonna be careful with my float here. Let that thing drop in. And I don't really remember the orientation of this thing, but I do know these things really go in only one way. Man, this thing is easier to take out than it is to put back in. And I'm trying to clear this guy over here, up over here by one. Could be wrong. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that tab should only go in one way. At least that's the concept, right? Okay, so it takes a little bit of force to push that down because it is spring loaded. One of the good things about recording this stuff is I can always go back and take a look at what everything looked like over that away. Yeah, that's exactly how it was. Okay, all right, make sure it's all nice and seated. And we'll start working it back into position. There we go. We got it turned all the way until it stopped. It's locked in. So now we can start. I don't even remember if this goes over it, under it. Uh, ah, okay. Oh Lord, I know it goes there. <laughs> you go in here somehow. Go back to my video again. All right, I think I got this thing figured out. There we go. Snap that on. And this is our fuel side here. I think we're ready to toss this back in the car. All right, so the easiest way to do this is probably the same way it came out. I'm gonna lift that end up, put it up in there. I'm gonna get my strap hooked back up. We'll get that side somewhat secured and then lift this whole thing back up and we'll attach everything along the way. If you're wondering and you do wanna take this charcoal canister off to make things a little easier without any weight on it there's a little tab up here at the top of this bracket where you just pull the little locking tab it's this right here if i can get this to focus this little tab right here i did have to remove it real quick because i had this just kind of orientated wrong we got everything up top reassembled and i just need to lift this thing back up so that way i can connect the filler neck up here and then we'll reattach our fuel pressure sensor and then this little sensor here this connection to our charcoal canister and then we just have our other eg egr connection and our, our fuel line so let's jack her up and strap her in and to make things a little easier getting these straps back in i just bent it over my knee a little bit straightened it out 
once we put the fuel tank in there and tighten everything down, it'll go back to the shape that it needs to be. And we got this guy too that connects to the filler neck that needs to be connected, part of the, I guess the EGR, I don't know. Well, we got everything installed. I just need to let the jack down. I'm just gonna double check everything. Looks like our straps are in the, in the proper place. Got them all tightened down. The exhaust is just gonna stay as is for now because we are redoing this with three inch. Don't even know if I wanna go all the way back. We got our filler neck hooked up. Let's go around to the other side. We got our little EGR thing hooked up there. We got our fuel line hooked up. As I'm sitting here editing this video, I realized I left out the little blue clip. So I went ahead and installed that, doing things at nighttime. Just uh, go back and double check stuff. That was something I missed. Anyways, let's get back to the regularly regularly scheduled program. Wiring to the sensor, the other EGR portion. We took care of the top. Well, that was a good amount of work. I'd say if I weren't filming it, it probably would have taken about three hours. However, I started around maybe 8, 8.30, not at the latest, it's almost two in the morning, but we got her done. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, I'm Matt. Be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Until next time, peace out. Whee!